Hello, we're Christian and Kareen from CK Performance Clinics. Welcome to our new wing foil series. Today, it's all about the preparation you need before getting up on the foil. Whether rocketing up into space or venturing up onto the foil, for your mission to be successful, you have to be ready. As such, we'll concentrate on being on the water and off the foil. This is not a beginner's lesson nor a substitute for one, rather a guide to help your discovery time and exploration on the water. As you move onto the foil and into stronger breezes, you will benefit from everything you learn now. The aim is to be comfortable and in control. So that you're prepared for liftoff when that birthday gust hits. We're going to give you a method to get up and going on your board, which you will use time and again. A reliable process to find your balance, get your bearings and position yourself. Conditions do change, fatigue sets in and things don't always go to plan. Having this process to return to is essential and a massive confidence booster. Flying your wing on terra firma is a crucial first step. Once you're happy with your wing, nothing beats being on the water. Why? The sensation is very different once you're standing on a moving board and you will get a realistic feel of what's to come. Grasping the wing with your fingertips, experiencing the magical mixture of true apparent and induced wind at play. But no need for that theory now. It doesn't matter if you're an Olympic gymnast or a fledging winger. Baby steps are the path to greatness. This applies to both technique and conditions. If possible, find some flat water and a gentle breeze. Eight to 10 knots, perfect. It's amazing how much you will learn wobbling around in a few knots when you're not battling the elements. As your ability and confidence grow, you can step out into stronger breezes and bump your waters. If you've got the full shebang, use it. Any time spent on your kit can only be a positive. It's good to get used to the foil lurking underwater, how the board will turn and how it gives you stability and direction, much like a keel. Let's have a quick look at some kit choices. Board leash, do you need one? At the moment, yes. It's so good to know that the board won't disappear when you fall in. It's amazing how quickly a board drifts away, even in light wind. And trying to swim after it with a wing attached to one arm is challenging to say the least. A calf coil leash is a good option. Wrist leash. When you're not holding the wing, you'll feel its whereabouts with it. Wear it on your dominant hand as you'll find it easier to untangle when riding. Wing. If you've purchased a wing, it's the right one to play with. If you have a selection, your mid-sized wing will be perfect for pottering and preparing. Board. A few considerations. Corinne, what's your opinion? Well, something light, easy to carry, ideally with a handle, not too long so it fits in the car. However, it has to be big enough. By big, we mean volume. Yeah, we're looking at 30 to 40 litres more than your body weight in kilogram. This means it'll easily float you. You can stand on it, and even if you're on an inland water and get a five minute lull, you've got a decent platform. There are plenty of short and wide boards that give oodles of stability when you're not foiling. Yet, because they're relatively short, they feel lively, sporty, and they're still pumpable. Don't worry about foot straps at the moment, they'll just trip you up. As for foiling kit, mast, whatever you've got, just make sure that the water is deep enough to accommodate the length of your mast and the front wing on the bottom of it. Front wing, same again, whatever you've got. If you happen to have a choice, a large, low aspect wing. The fatter, more dustbin lid type is your weapon of choice. Off the foil, it won't stick out as much and therefore you're less likely to kick it when in the water. And once it's time for liftoff, it'll sure make life simpler. Brilliant, kit's ready, conditions are good. Let's get out there. Front foot up, our preferred method for many reasons. You can use the leading edge for support whilst you position your front foot and whilst you make sure it's in the correct place before you stand up. It requires less flexibility, less balance, and you're already halfway up. Let's have a look. 
Before climbing up, we need everything in position. Wind blowing onto your back, board downwind of you, and wing downwind of your board. After a fall, it might well be like this, but if it's not, make sure it is. If your leash is on the wrong side, lie back and lift your legs over it, then swing your board across the wind. Set your hands wide and centred so you can push yourself up until you're kneeling across the middle of your board. Using your leash, pull the wing in until it butts up against the board. If your wing is the wrong way up, you can now flip it. Work down the leading edge to a wing tip and flip it over. Place your hands on the leading edge and lean on it. Use it for support. You're now balanced and your board will be lying across the wind. Take a breath. This is the ideal moment to bring your front foot up. As you can see, Corrine places her foot pointing slightly forwards near the front foot strap inserts. Her toes lie across the centre line of her board. Exactly where your front foot is positioned will depend on the length and width of your board, your weight and even the size of your feet. Too far forwards and you risk sinking the nose when you stand, and not central enough you risk tipping the board sideways. If you don't get it right, you will soon know about it. No rush, leaning on your wing gives you time to place your foot. With your front foot in position, you can now fly the wing. Grab the leading edge handle with your front hand and lift the wing up. As it lifts, reach underneath and grab the first front handle with your back hand. We should pause here to introduce a fantastic drill to discover how we use the wing to turn the board and establish where the board is in relation to the wind. Push the wing back and the nose turns up into the wind. Push it forwards and the nose turns away from the wind. Return the wing to center and the board moves back across the wind. OK, back to the method. Turn the board slightly upwind. Why? With the nose pointing slightly upwind, you're less likely to catch the wing in the water and it's a very balanced position. Release the leading edge and grab the first front handle next to your other hand. Now you can release your back hand and reach further down for a rear handle. By bringing the wing over your head with your front arm, it will help you reach that rear handle. Use the wing to help you stand up. Extend your front arm high and pull gently on your back hand. As soon as your back foot lands, sheet out by straightening your back arm. Let's ponder for a moment. It's all about balance. To find your balance, the board needs to be balanced. Whether climbing on or riding, your aim is to keep it flat. Or in nautical terms, trimmed. What do we mean? It needs to lie flat on the water, both from nose to tail and rail to rail. So you're up on the board, brilliant. First off, make sure your wing is pulling you forward. If you think of your leading edge as a big arrowhead, you want it pointing in the direction that you want to go in. As soon as Corrine's up, she uses her arms to point her wing forwards. There are many factors that affect where and how your wing flies. It's not as simple as X marks the spot, yet again an important part of your discovery time. A few wing tips for now. Which handles you use will depend on your wing. You need a fairly wide span between your hands to have the necessary range of movement to steer your wing. Front arm relatively straight and held forwards. An overhand grip will make this easier. How straight will depend on how much the wing is pulling. Get used to a light grip so you can be gentle with your movements and acclimatise to the feeling of being pulled. Your front hand should remain higher than the back hand, even if only fractionally, as this will prevent the wing steering down into the water. Equally essential once you're up, foot position. You know where your front foot is? What about your back foot? It should straddle the centre line so that it can trim the board flat from rail to rail. Feet should be a bit wider than shoulder width apart, which will put your back foot just in front of the mast. Foot position is not fixed, so you can shuffle and rearrange your feet to keep the board relatively flat. The beauty is, without foot straps, your feet can move freely. Explore and discover the subtleties of trimming the board. Much like the wing, there isn't an absolute position for your feet due to a host of variables, including your board, your weight and even the position of your foil.
However, your aim is to have weight on both feet so you can put pressure through both legs. So check your feet. Let's ponder board trim. It's important now and will be even more important once you take off and start foiling, adding a new dimension and discovering the importance of foil trim. Get this dialed now and you're on to a winner as you shift up through the gears. Le Grand Bleu. Where do you go? You have the choice. You want to be going upwind. Let's ponder why. Learning to ride upwind off the foil is absolutely essential. It allows you to come back to where you started from. Wind pushes you downwind. Whilst climbing on, sorting your wing, when turning, learning to get on the foil and every time you fall off, you will drift downwind. Get the message? Riding upwind means less paddling or walking and more time winging. And it puts you in a perfect position. You can't go straight into the wind, in fact far from it, but you can climb diagonally towards it. To ride upwind you need to learn to steer the board in your chosen direction and maintain that path. The great thing is you already know how to steer. Remember the drill? Position the board. We're going to do exactly the same, but whilst riding. You can steer the board up towards the wind by pushing your arms and the wing back. And you can steer the board away from the wind by pushing the wing forwards towards the nose. Looking where you want to go is vital to steering. Straighten up, turn up wind, choose your pass and stop turning. Subtle movements to ride in a straight line. On a bike, you have to straighten up the handlebars. Same here. The zigzag drill. An amazing way to explore a large range of movement and discover how close to the wind you can go before slowing down too much. Start by turning up wind. As you push the wing back, you'll feel more pressure going through your back leg. The board slows to a stop as you get too close to the wind. Now, turn away from the wind. As you push the wing forwards, sheet in gently with your back arm. You'll feel more pressure through your front leg. As the board bears away, sheet out. Do this a few times and the result will be a snaky zigzag. You are now in a strong ready position. You're riding upwind, you've checked your feet, your board is trimmed, you are in control, ready to gain speed for takeoff. To get up and going on your fall, you need to build sufficient speed. In the last drill, you will have noticed that as you bear away, you accelerate. This acceleration is critical. So your final bit of prep is to bear away with meaning, when you feel a gust or have more power in your wing. With more weight on your back foot, really extend your front arm forwards, holding the wing steady with your back hand. Transfer the pull from the wing through your body into your front leg and push the nose of the board off the wind with your front foot. With enough speed, you'll feel the board plane and lighten as the foil generates lift. Accelerating on a flat board takes some getting used to. The great thing is, you now have a strong position from which to accelerate. There you have it. Get practicing, get prepared and be ready for takeoff. Feel free to give us a like, subscribe, and if you know anyone this video could help, please share it. See you next time. Enjoy.